Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Paul, aka your brother from another mother, who also happens to be your sister. In this video, we're breaking down the episode 4 trailer for House of the Dragon. After the big battle in episode 3, there's going to be some major change ups in the series, and throughout this video, we're going to be going over everything you need to know about the new teaser. Full spoilers ahead, so if you don't want anything potentially ruined, then I insist that you turn off now. Unlike our breakdowns, we will be discussing future book events to give context to what we see, so turn off if you want to go into episode 4 without knowing anything. Out of the way, huge thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into the episode 4 trailer. From my blood come the prince that was promised, and his will be the song of ice and fire. Okay, so the teaser starts off with Rhaenyra reading what appears to be a scripture imprinted under the Valerian steel dagger. We already know from episode 1 that this prophesizes the rise of the White Walkers, and it also states that a Targaryen has to be on the throne when they arrive. This is known as the Song of Ice and Fire, which is the name of the franchise overall. This was initially shown in a dream, and it's a secret that's been passed from king to king throughout the ages to warn of what's coming. Now we hear the phrase, the prince that was promised, which is a term often used throughout Game of Thrones to describe this prophesized character. One thing you might not know is that the word prince in High Valerian is actually genderless, and therefore can refer to both a male and female character, setting things up to either be Danny or Jon Snow. It all just depends on who you want the prophecy to be about, and initially Melisandre believed that the prophecy spoke about Stannis, but after he was killed, she changed her tune and started thinking it was about Jon. He of course died and came back, but other Red Priestesses believed it to be Danny. This is why one visited her at one point in the series, and they basically played up the idea that she was the chosen one. I feel like this series is sort of backdoor mending some of the events of Season 8, and I can imagine that it will likely end with us getting a full focus on the dagger. Spoiler alert, but all of these characters are of course dead come the end of the first season of Game of Thrones, so it will likely be the only item that really ties over from this into that. I'd love it if Melisandre showed up at some point due to her being able to appear youthful, and she could take the dagger herself and pass it on to the new guys, or, or old guys. The House of the Dragon will stand as one for a further generation. Who will it be? The brother? Now from here we cut to a character running past the dragon skull of Balerion located in the Red Keep. This was the location that Viserys delivered the original dagger speech at, and it could be tying into that scene with us seeing another part of it. In case you don't know, Balerion was Viserys' dragon, and after he died, the king decided not to take another one. Typically dragon riders would get others, but we've seen through his Black Dread statue how he prefers to be without due to the close connection that he had with it. He watches Viserys takes his crown, and then see Daemon show up wearing his own. If you've been watching our breakdowns, then you'll know how we've talked about how this came about, but if you haven't, then the next part of the video is for you. Also subscribe, yeah? Why, why aren't you watching the breakdowns? You f now in the book, Lord Corlys promised him a kingdom in order to make him invested in the war against Crabfeeder. After numerous victories, he was crowned King of the Stepstones in Narrow Sea, which is why we see him wearing a crown here. He actually returned to the kingdom during one of the great tournaments, and it was also at this event that the Green and Blacks were formed. Whilst it all seemed like a power play for Daemon, he actually ended up handing over his crown and kingdom to win back the favour of his brother. Can see that definitely being something that happens in this entry, with him giving the crown over to the king in order to be allowed back into the kingdom. The brother? They name me King of the Narrow Sea. The daughter? Your courtship is at an end. So I can be a remedy for your political headache. You are my political headache. What a little princeling of three! Now over the top of this, we also hear the different airs, and according to the subtitles, this is said by a street performer. Interestingly, you might also know that they say the Little Princeling of Three, which is a reference to Aegon. Last episode centered around his second birthday, so this indicates that the episode will have a time jump of about one year. Now there's also talk of a vile rumour circulating through the realm, and we see two hands pressing on top of each other. My guess is that this is the rumour that Daemon and Rhaenyra will have slept with each other, which was a big part of the source material. The books talked about how he'd sneak her out of the castle whilst she was dressed as a page boy, and the pair would then go to brothels. It is possible that we might even see this in the teaser, with us getting a shot of Daemon wearing a cloak, and also Rhaenyra running in disguise. This appears to be through the streets of King's Landing, and we catch someone bursting up a fireball. This might be the scene in which the street performer talks about the heirs, but let me know below exactly what you think. Now the story of Daemon and Rhaenyra sleeping together is filled with second-hand accounts and gossip, 
namely from the character Mushroom. This is someone who doesn't appear in the show, but in the book, he's basically a jester that spreads rumour throughout King's Landing. Mushroom said that the pair got it on, and there was a number of reasons for this. Initially, it was thought they did this because Damon was telling her how to seduce Sir Kristen, whereas others say they just did it because they were attracted to each other. This talks of the pair also flying away together to faraway lands, so that they could run around naked together, and yeah, lots lo- lo- going on there, mate. Now, Rhaenyra is clearly denying that any of it is true, and it might not have even happened in the show canon. In the book, she threw herself at Sir Kristen, but he ended up rejecting her, and she ran off into the night. She actually ended up sleeping with Sir Lionel Strong's son, who she bumped into, and he's the character that the books says took her maiden head. Basically, a maiden head is your V-Cod, and that's for anyone who wasn't born in Westeros or the 13th century. Now, Otto appears to be telling Viserys about this, and it could end up being a rumour spread by him in order to have her ousted. The book constantly talked about how he tried to get Rhaenyra pulled down as the heir, so that he could prop up his grandson Aegon as the next in line. Also, they say Aegon in the show, I'm just calling him Aegon because that's how I was raised. Now, both he and Alicent have been complicit in the seize for power, with them conniving a way to get her close to the king. In the book, there's also the groundwork there for them trying to get this plan enacted with a prior King Jaehaerys. The story talks about how, when he was on his deathbed, that Alicent would venture out to him and read him stories in the night. In his old age, he started to believe that she was one of his daughters, but there might have even been a possible play by the pair there to get her close to him before Viserys came along. Thinking about that though, they kind of changed up the timeline a bit, with Alicent being 15 when she did that, whereas here, she was 15 when she went to Viserys. Bit of timey-wimey, noncy wancy wibbly wobbly stuff, but I'm just showing you how things happen. Now it seems like they're going to try and force Rhaenyra into a marriage after this, as we see her attending court. Beside her, we can catch a character wearing the Baratheon sigil, as well as Sir Kristen Cole, and someone up front who I don't think I recognise. I have discomforting news. This is a vile accusation. Who is responsible for this gossip? I will take their eyes. It is not in Rhaenyra's nature to be deceitful. I cannot say the same for your brother. The teaser ends with a dragon swooping in, and this seems to be Caraxes, aka Damon's dragon. We can tell this by the red scales that it carries, which are typically associated with the creature. This could be the group sailing out to take part in the courtship, and Damon may end up racing ahead and even putting himself forth to marry Rhaenyra. In the books, he tried to take her hand in the marriage after the brothel stuff, and he said that it was Targaryen tradition for aunties to marry nephews and nieces to marry uncles. So he could be flying out there to attempt to stop the whole thing, but it is still pretty early on in the timeline for that to be happening. Either way, that's everything we noticed and could decipher in this brand new look. The show is changing things up a lot from the books, so these predictions might not even end up being true. However, I do think the rumour thing will be about Damon and Rhaenyra, as it seems to be centred around the latter. This is roughly the point in the timeline where that took place, so that would be my guess for the whole thing overall. Now obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, so make sure you comment below and let me know. We are running a competition right now and giving away three copies of Top Gun Maverick on the 15th of September, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the episode. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at HeavySpoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of episode 3, which will be linked on screen right now. We went over the whole thing from top to bottom, talked about all the callbacks to the books, all the things they do differently, and it's definitely worth checking out right after this. Without the way, thanks for sticking through the video. I've been Paul, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, peace.